What's up, YouTube? I'm sure you've all been here before. You have won your lane, but you failed to close out the game because you have no idea how to really end the game or win the game. But you are absolutely convinced that it is your teammates that are holding you back from winning the game. Whilst this might be true in some games, let's say maybe 10% of the games, nine out of your other 10 games are going to be in your responsibility. And in this vote, I'll show you exactly why this is the case and why we should have a responsible mindset. This is going to be the second video of our reviewing the vault sessions and i've decided to call it fundamentals academy in this vault we're going to be reviewing the laning phase and see why he was so successful by utilizing fundamentals in the lane and i'm going to showcase you why it's so important to also have structure in your mid to late game through tempo and macro if you guys enjoy this type of videos i would really appreciate it if you guys could leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the video let's dive into it bros every move you made i was watching you if you are serious about improving and climbing to your desired league rank, you're in the right place. I've worked on laying out two courses that will help you in all aspects to improve. One is about all the fundamentals for the landing phase, and the other one goes in-depth on tempo and the mid to late. I've been challenger for 7 years and I can guarantee you that this will massively speed up your process and reaching any goal that you have set in mind. Both courses have a preview video where you can see the style of the videos, so check those out before anything. You can also always join my Discord to check out some reviews. Alright, let's get into the video. To give a little bit of insights, we're spectating an Emerald Rune player and the rank that he's facing is Platinum. This was a normal game, but these are their real elos that they are in their ranked games. Now, Riven into Rankton is of course a very ranked and favorite matchup, however, and this is important to know, Rankton loses the matchup into Riven level 1 because he doesn't, like, Rankton is conditional, right? So he needs Fury to have his empowered abilities, and he wants multiple abilities to be able to have extended traits, whereas Riven has three auto attack resets at level 1 with Conqueror making her a stronger champion. Playing Conqueror Resolve with Ignite, and Rankton is playing PTA Resolve with Flash. And we start off with the Redicton taking a super, super bad approach to the lady phase. And remember, one of my most repeated sentences and, you know, common phrases that I will use is your first four waves are the most important to your landing phase. Anything that happens after the first four waves very often is a direct result of how you basically played your lane in those first four waves. And ranked in here, with opting for this pathing, has given the opportunity for Riven to get an amazing level one trade, which she'll be taking here. And absolutely amazing. She kites the ranked in a little bit back. And as you guys can see, it was not even a remotely close of a trade. Ranked could have maybe auto queued back. But this, of course, was super good for Riven. She instantly has presence in the game. What ranked in should do is allow himself to get pushed in because he's already down so much HP and by him hitting the wave here is his second blunder because what's going to happen after him hitting the wave it's going to push it towards his opponent right now if you're already have HP and your wave is going to be pushing to your opponent this is pretty bad and Riven will capitalize off this first things first what she does is really smart she starts hitting the wave as well to match the pressure that the Rankton has one thing of course to keep in mind is if your opponent hard pushes towards you and he would get to his level of tower before you that would give him an advantageous position again right but here Riven very smart starts hitting the wave as well and keeps up the pressure with the Rankton Rankton walks up for the last hit completely disregarding Riven Q cooldown and this is also how Riven completely wins the early laning phase here and I would more so say that this is, of course, a mistake by Rankton and not necessarily a super good play by the Riven. However, she did capitalize off him. She took the love one trade and this was super good. What we should do in Riven's shoes is I would not last it any means until you are forced to last it them at the latest frame. Because what's currently happening is the wave is actually pushing towards us. If Rankton is already down, right, and the wave would push towards us and we'd get our level ups faster, this would put Rankton absolutely impossible scenario to play however Riven does decide to last at this minion whilst it was not necessary and this one was necessary but now you see it's more so in a neutral state again that last was too early as well right and even though these are very tiny small details they they matter a lot because had we not lasted those minions whilst we didn't have to right lasting at the latest frame means last hitting when it's absolutely crucial because it would die to another minion shot it would really delay like our speed with thinning out the wave thus making the wave push towards us and forcing Rankton to walk off for last hits. Now we've thinned it out and the wave would actually be pushing back into Rankton. However, this is not necessarily a mistake because this could set up a reset for ourselves, right? So we have to make a plan for ourselves. Now, why would I want to keep into the laning phase here or why did I want to make the wave push towards us? That is because we were not forced to go for a reset. Our echo is passing towards us. We were still full HP. We still have our potion. So we are not in like a position where we had to push the wave, right? However, if we were, let's say, have our HP, then we should have done it. All right, let's continue now. So now what I would want to Riven to be thinking about is what kind of crash would I want to do? All right, we are level two. Rankton just simply walks up again, absolutely disregarding Riven. And um, 
yeah, Le I don't know. This Reddington has thus far absolutely played this matchup horribly, right? Purely horribly. All right. And so now I kind of want to make a plan for ourselves in this frame. What are the plans that I would be making? It would be very simple here. That would be to have this wave walk into our lane in a comfortable manner so that we can hard push it and reset it. Or we're going to slow push this, slow push wave three and hard push wave four to set up a reset. It's kind of hard to slow push wave three here with how close the wave is already to his turret. So here, my general idea would be slow push wave or slow push wave two right here. Again, to allow this wave three to walk further in the lane, then give us a comfortable position to hard push wave three and look to reset. And we can still try to utilize our level three timer if the Rankton decides to walk up, let's say in a stupid fashion and we get a trade timer like that. Okay, so here again, this last hit is too early. We didn't have to last hit that early. And this last hit again is going to be too early as well. Well, actually, no, this one was perfect. This one was perfect. But now another question to you guys, how many mains do we need for our level three timer? And this is super interesting because if you know those timers exactly, you can play actively towards them with your cooldowns in the sense that you're going to hold your cooldowns until you get your level up. For the level three timer, you need the first two full waves and two melee minions on wave number three to get your level three. But here, Riven decides to use her cooldowns whilst Rankton goes for a last hit. It was an okay timer, but the Rankton level up and unfortunately she does take a turret shot. And now I'm kind of disliking our position for multiple reasons. Uh, we end up not getting punished here, but in a different world, Briar could have done, let's say, like three camps top, right? And, and be ganking top here. She's invading our echo here right now. So this is not the case. But in quite a lot of Mondo games, if enemy jungler starts in top side, which we did not prepare for, we didn't have a ward, and we would get ganked here. I would say our letting phase is practically over because it's perma frozen here and we are super hard punished, right? So my preferred play would have always been here uh, in, a, in a matter of consistency is to play with the wave. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is to pop our potion right here because the higher HP we are, the easier it is for us to approach the wave and look for more aggressive traits. Or if we get ganked, we have an easier way or an easier time escaping, right? So I would have popped our potion already, had it running, and I would have never looked for a trait like this. I would have played for my level three and probably crashed the wave as a matter of consistency. Simply because after crashing the third wave, Rankton would be in a lose-lose scenario, and I'll explain to you guys why. Because Briar is bot side right now, we have the luxury that we can still play for this, and what Riven should do right now is hard push this third wave as fast as possible and set up a reset, because what Rankton has to do from his perspective is lose-lose. When the wave is going to crash into the third right here, Rankton can choose to... Well, he has to collect this wave, right? That, that is a must. But if Riven pushes this fast enough, resets and runs back, Rankton does not have enough time to collect this wave and push this next wave to get it to crash into Riven's turret. So what does that mean? That means that Riven by default would always get a freeze simply because Rankton does not have enough pushing power to play out the bounce. The second option then could be to collect this wave and instantly recall. However, what would happen after Rankton crashes this, or Riven crashes this wave and resets is that the wave would still slow bounce back into Riven. So regardless of the decision that Rankton would make here, we get ahead 100% of the time, which is a rare instance in League of Legends. Uh, yeah, we look for super aggressive traits. Again, we do not get punished, so we are in a good position, but I still don't like the eventual, like the, the play that happened here. If you're a super proficient Riven player, you could do one of the harder combos, which would be E and then Flash, Auto WQ, you could one shot him with a double cast, but he also has bone plating, and I think the risk to reward ratio is too low here because he could react with his own flesh as well, and then you're stuck, right? So for me here, the best play would not be to look for kill mentality, but to just push in this wave as you get ahead 100% of the time. Riven pushes in the wave here, and she does go for the reset, which I absolutely love to see. I just think we could have been faster, because we have our bone plating as well, and we're last sitting here. There we go, we're finally pushed, but we could have done this three seconds faster, and three seconds of tempo is massive, because we're walking here now, and now I would argue that Rankton almost has enough uh, like tempo to push in this wave, and push in the next wave as well, before we are back, simply because it took us so long to decide to hard push. Rankton is pushing the wave here, we saw him dash on the wave, but I still think because he's level 3, it's hard for him to crash this before this wave arrives, right? That's how I'm always looking at waves, because you should be playing in advance. So, we buy a pickaxe, I think the purchase is fine, you could go double long longsword refillable, or just for a pickaxe, we go for a pickaxe. Alright, our jungler gets invaded again. Now, this move timer is correct, how do I know this? Because before we move, I check out what's happening with the wave first, and you see here that this wave is just outside of turret range which means that it's actually frozen here. That gives us an opportunity to move into this jungle. If this wave crashes into our turret, 
I would have a harder time moving here because we would lose this full wave that is going into our turret and then afterwards the wave would bounce away from us as well so we're only losing resources but here it's actually a good time to move because the wave is not in our turret that means the wave is going to be frozen here because our medium wave is going to meet here but his next medium wave is walking as well right so he's gonna have a bigger medium wave that is going to make the wave keep pushing towards us right the ranked was super low hp we are not sure if he's moving towards us or if he's looking for a reset or if he wants to push his next wave as well which would be his best play L let's just see what happens here so this move is good simply because the wave is in a good position and we can help our jungler akali's moving too so i'd be a little bit scared here but akali shows back mid riven was patient here she finds the briar gets an amazing all-in window and it gets the double buffs right here whilst not losing any means in the wave i think the rankton was in a hard position trying to decide to either push move or recall he had three options he decided i think to recall and so we go back to lane and we are in an amazing position right now first thing i would want to do when landing back here is check the items of Rankton once we go back into lane. We check our items, we know how strong our opponent is, we know if we should, fi if we should be fighting or not. Other than that, I would want to last it here at the latest frames to keep holding the wave here. And we do not check for items, ingrain this as a habit. There we go, we checked it. He has a longsword, no potions. We're both level 4, but since we are slow pushing towards our opponent, we are in an amazing position here. We're stronger, we have double boss, we have pickaxe. Our position is really good. All right. Uh, what I would be considering is waiting for my Ignite and maybe also playing for my level 5 timer. And one thing I would maybe try to do is get his bone plating out so that once I'm level 5 and I have my Ignite, I can look for an all-in window. So there with our Q, I think we had the opportunity to look for a small trade just to get his bone plating out. All right, we get our level 5. We have our Ignite. In Rankton's perspective, should he ever walk up here for last hits? The answer is absolutely never simply because he's not forced to walk off for license right the wave is pushing back into him even though it doesn't look like it at this frame right Let, let's look at it here we have one two three four millions he is one two three four five six millions my counter yes five six millions the thing is what's going to happen here is there's a next wave approaching right and our wave approaches faster so what happens here is our castes are going to be staying alive Whilst all of his means are going to die, keep in mind these three castes here. Maybe one dies, okay? One dies. But two are still alive. And what this does is that eventually this wave is going, our wave is going to get bigger and it will bounce back into him. And as you see right here, eventually our means will stay alive compared to his. Our next wave will rise faster too. And here again, we have three casters, two, three casters. One dies, two stay alive. Now the wave is pushing to our opponent. That's how bounces work in general, right? Okay. So now rank 2 should never be walking up and my idea would be to slow push this wave and again every time check your mini map where the next minion wave is at i see my minion wave is here well that's also where our opponent minion wave is at and then this is also where our opponent's minion wave is at so if we just slow push this allow the next wave to walk into our lane we just hard push that we get a reset and again rankton is forced to make a bad decision instead rankton does a blunder and he walks up for the last hit right here and goes for a trade and ease forward not entirely sure why I believe he has flesh here as well. He should just be flashing out. This rank is playing super mechanically weird. I would just say strange. Okay, we get the kill. Now we're gonna hard push this wave and we're gonna set up a reset. Absolutely amazing. And uh, we're we're in a lovely position where Snowball looks super hard. This perch is absolutely perfect. And we go back into the lane. Now, looks like the Rankton and the Kali have lane swap. So the first thing we should do when heading back into lane is check the items again. But it looks like Riven is doing that, which is really, really good. Okay, so Akali has boots and a dark suit, so she is she is okay strong, right? Another thing that I would consider here heading back into laning phase is we only need 475 gold before we have Eclipse. Now, if you are able to spike towards a full item, that is always better than sitting on components, right? I don't know what champion you play, but let's say you play Aurelia. If you have a pickaxe and a Vamp Scepter and a Recurve Bow, you know you're only half as strong than if you actually finish your Blade of the Rune King, right? Or if you're Riven, if you're sitting on these components, you become twice as strong if you finish your eclipse and this counts for every com completed item co that you can get right especially after the nerfs now with 14.6 patch so here my main goal heading back into landing phase would just be to get 500 gold and reset because if i reset to get 500 gold i have a full eclipse if akali resets with 500 gold she's gonna get like a book but you see it would make a massive difference in terms of um item discrepancy and strength so here i would never fight with the reason that she's six there's a big medium wave and we should just play for eclipse okay so we collect this wave now on this bounce what should we do my plan would be as follow i would slow push this wave because a cannon medium wave gives around 170 to 200 gold in gold because you also get gold from the game right but 200 gold is not enough to get our item so uh, a normal wave giving around 100 gold a cannon wave giving around 170 gold those two would be 
perfectly enough for us to get Eclipse, right? So I would always slow push this wave and then wait for the next wave to come, walk into lane. That's the wave I hard push, I set up my reset. The reason I would feel comfortable doing so as well is because we're super close to level 7. And as you guys see right here, I am always, always planning ahead with my wave. And that's what makes me so consistent, right? Making your plan is going to be hard because, of course, I have so much experience, so it's easier for me to do. But you see, you always should be making or ingraining the habit of making a plan with your next wave. Because if you're playing ahead, you're always going to be a step ahead of your opponent, right? Um, another thing, again, that I said is we should be playing for the level 7 because it's just going to make us a little bit stronger. Instead, what Riven does is look instantly for a trade here. Now, I dislike this trade immensely. The risk to reward of taking a fight right here is, is super bad because we have a shutdown. We don't have flash or ignite. We're both level 6 and we're super close to an item spike. Talking about the execution of the skirmish as well, first of all, our bone plate is on cooldown. And Riven uses two Qs here. I don't like to talk about mechanics too much in votes like this, but I think it's important to highlight here. Uh, because Riven uses two Qs to get close and uses E and W at once, which loses her an auto attack, right? So watch this. We use Q forward, E, W, auto attack Q. And we only, okay, we use two Qs onto her, but this fight could have been lost and it was super close. We end up killing her, but I'm happy with the fight that we took. The intention was not there. It was way better in terms of consistency, slow push the wave into hard push, not take any risks, get our reset, get our eclipse, game is over. Second thing here is once we've killed the Akali, the first thing I want you to remember always heading forward right now, if you kill your opponent, first thing you do, check the minimap, where's the next minion wave at? And then the question is, can we push this wave into our opponent's turret before the next wave arrives? Well, it's already at the tier two, so the answer is no. Then what should we do? We should slow push this a little bit and always allow this next wave to walk through the lane so we have an easier time pushing the next wave because it's not under their turret. Does that make sense? I'm going to showcase you now what I mean. So here, Riven is actually going to hard push this, and I dislike this because right now you see enemy main wave is walking forward. Now, Briar luckily is on Dragon, so again, we are not getting punished. But look how awkward it is for us right now to hard push this wave, right? It's a little bit awkward. If we take a turret shot, we, we just die. So she's not really allowed to use AOE on the wave, and... So we push the wave before here faster, but it actually loses us tempo. Now going for a plate is alright, but uh, also, and this is like nitpicking, but it's still important. Why should we ever be hitting the turret, right, at this site when we want to recall here anyways? So we lose extra tempo seconds again going from here to here. All we should do is hit this once, the means will do the rest of the work and, and start channeling our recall. Right? You just have to hit it once, stay in combat with the with the plate, and like four or five seconds later, you would still get the plate, even though you're like super far away. But now Riven loses crucial tempo by first of all hitting it here, hitting it multiple times, getting the plate, taking an extra hit, and now I have to walk all the way to the bush. And these are t t like small habits, right? But these all stack up. All right. Now we get our Eclipse, and I really like that we bought a Ruby Crystal simply because building defensive at this point in the game is better than building offensive. We have more than enough damage to kill our opponents, but if we stay alive, that'll put us in a better position. We are infinitely stronger than anybody on the map. Yes, our teammates are doing pretty poorly, but we are in an amazing position and we are winning against both our solo laners, okay? So we head back into lane, we get both our summoners. Now I am down to fight, even though I don't have my ultimate yet, simply because we have a full Eclipse. The fight will never be close, and Akali doesn't have ult as well. Plus we are a level above here, and as you can see right here, we're two levels above here, Akali takes the fight, well she loses, that's it. Same thing here guys, what should we do after killing the Akali? Remember, I just told you, check where the next meme wave is at first. Well, it's almost at the tier two, guess what? I'm fine pushing this, but not super hard pushing everything. I would want you to leave at least one minion alive, such as the cannon, to allow this next minion wave to walk into lane, saving you tempo. Instead, look what we do. We're gonna hard push this wave with all our might, and then it's going to be a little bit trickier again to collect this next wave. And we lose the cannon. That's uh, something that I would never do, honestly. But you see here again, because we push it so far, look how awkward it is to farm this wave again. And it's just going to lose your tempo consistently doing it, right? Because now you kind of can't go to his cast yet. You have to wait a little bit, yada, yada, yada. It, it costs you tempo, trust me. All right, we get the plate. We recall Briar showed, but we get a recall in. We're going to lose a wave because we stayed for the plate, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, here is also where I would buy Sweeper simply because he's good against Akali W, and I would favor uh, denying her vision more than getting it myself. All right, here it's always important to press tab, keep track of items. We see that Briar is very strong, two and one. She's playing with a Brutalizer and a Tiamat. 
uh, and our bot lander strong, but that doesn't really matter. I would just keep looking to push my lead, try to see if we can kill the Akali, and, and, and just get the turret as, as fast as possible, and we end up doing so. So we don't have to deep dive on this, which is super far ahead now, and uh, we just want to look to see if we can uh, expose this Akali. We get a beautiful combo, and we get an amazing kill. I don't remember here, this is absolutely amazing to see as well. So this is just the strength of Eclipse as well. She gets a shield here, shoots there, with her E, and she actually ends up getting this kill. Super impressive, right? So this is amazing to see. Uh, we're 7-0, we've shut down the Rankton, we've shut down the Akali, and now we shut down the Briar too. So, in terms of this game, we, we are we, we are heads and shoulders above anybody else, and we definitely are strong enough to carry this game, right? So let's keep it going now. Alright, so we should set up a reset fast, so we can spend our gold to keep expanding the lead. We go back into lane, and uh, we have our ultimate right here, and this is just all good, we get our level 11, same thing. I want to try and get the third, kill the Akali, and get that done over with ASAP. I'm not going to look too heavy into the mechanics. Akali ult, Soraka ults, that's perfect. Now what we should do is we have enough tempo. Akali has no ult. She cannot defend this turret on this HP. We should play for this turret because we can get it 100%. And if we get this turret, we don't have to open up into top lane permanently anymore. We're going to have the opportunity to gain more tempo by pushing the wave instead of into the tier 1 all the way into the tier 2. And that leaves us for more roam opportunities. Okay. Instead, we're going to be freezing here and like trying to kill the Akali whilst we had a full wave to get this turret. So I really dislike this first blunder in my opinion. A genuine blunder because we lose so much tempo seconds again by doing this. Okay, we do end up getting it, so it's amazing. And now I would want to push out this wave, reset and get our items. Very good, very good habit. Push out the wave, crash it, recall, the wave bounce back into you, you spend your gold. Now what do we do? This is the first interesting part of the game, right? And what I would want to do here is press tab and see where I would want to open up. We have multiple options. We could go back into top, but killing the, let's say, 0-3 Akali to 0-4 will not really change the auto in this game, right? Their weak condition in this game right now is their bot lane, with the Caitlyn being pretty strong, and maybe their Briar as well. Ranked and Akali are out of the game. Briar and their bot lane are their win condition. So, I would want to open up mid lane here as a habit, and then always have the opportunity to either dive mid or dive bot, simply so that uh, I can do something proactive, because, again, making the Akali 0-3 to 0-4 doesn't really matter. This is very interesting as well. Riven is going to leave the base and she's going to make an interesting suggestion. She's going to ask here, uh, I believe, bot, do you want to swap, right? But she removed it. I think her thought process here is correct, but there is one issue with swapping with the bot lane right now, and it is that enemy bot lane is still laning bot. Now, I wouldn't want to swap into their fat bot lane or their strong bot lane simply because you would just be clearing a wave and your opponents have enough wave clear to clear it as well, so you can't really progress. So what I would do instead is just keep the Akali top, let your bot lane lane against their bot, but set up a dive, for example, because then you have numbers advantage and you can pressure them, because as you can see, our bot lane is able to get priority, and then if we set up a dive, that makes it easier, right? So instead of swapping with your bot lane here, if enemy bot lane is still laning bot, I would want to maybe set up a dive on them. Now, if enemy bot lane went to mid lane, for example, then I would be absolutely fine swapping with your bot lane, because you should not be trying to lane against enemy bot lane in mid lane, right? Uh, and you don't want to lane to the Akali either, so then it makes sense to go bot lane, because you can play for the tier 1 bot there. But if enemy bot is there, it does not make a lot of sense. You'd rather want to overload on the side lane, right, with your bot lane and try to dive them, if possible. But in this instance, I say it is possible, because you're two full items, you're level 11, and you have your flesh coming up. By the time you're bot lane, you would be able to dive them. Now, I don't know why the recording looks like this right now, but uh, I'm gonna here, we can press tab. I always like to kind of envision the game for myself and see everything that's going on. So everything that I said here is still true. Their solo lanes are pretty far behind and they are out of the game, right? We are a full item ahead of the curve in the game, which is absolutely amazing to be in. Plus we're two levels of EXP ahead in the curve. Our jungle and bot lane are pretty weak, but they do have scaling and utility. And our mid lane is actually very strong. So it's our solo lanes against their bot and jungle. That's how the game looks right now. They also have two dragons, which is something I always want to memorize as well, because I want to be there for the third dragon if I can. And in games like this, I absolutely should be able to. So my plan would probably be to try and set up a dive on their bot lane. But we end up deciding to go back into top lane, which is not a bad thing, because if we can get their tier two with how strong we are, I like that too, because we are strong enough to 2v1 the Akali and the Briar right now, because we're two levels and a full item ahead of the curve. Three levels now even. So here Briar shows bot, and that gives us an opportunity to try and fight the Akali. We do take it, because we are so ridiculously strong. The combo is messy, I'm just gonna call it messy. But we get the kill, 
and we also get the tier 2 turret. So our decision here ended up being absolutely amazing. And getting a tier 2 turret at 60 minutes in a game like this is such a wonderful thing. Because right now my mindset would be I never have to go top lane anymore. Why? Because there is simply nothing for me to gain in terms of resources. Only side waves. But I would rather always go bot lane for the rest of the game right now. And play for this tier 1 and this tier 2. Oh, so sorry, this tier 2. Because there's nothing for me to gain on top lane anymore. So this is absolutely amazing. And we kill the Akali giving us you know, gold again, but this tier 2 turret gives us 700 gold, and now we're super, super accelerated into this game, and I would confidently say in this position, I, I will carry the game here 99% of the time, because I'm so accelerated, it is really hard for any team to ever match the gold income that I get, because realistically, another good thing that happened is enemy bot lane just killed our bot lane, so if you're in the perspective of enemy bot lane right now, where would you want to be? I would say enemy bot lane is going to open up mid lane right here, right? Why would enemy bot lane ever go bot lane again whilst they already got the turret? It's the same reason for them as it is for us. Why should we go top lane again if we've already gotten the turret? There's nothing to gain. So their bot lane is not going to be laning bot anymore. And that gives us tempo to play for this and to play for this as well. And so we're just going to accelerate this game so ridiculously fast that it doesn't really matter. We should recall, spend our gold and go into bot. Now... Uh, we are, we need 1k gold for our death stance, then we'd be 3 items and we'd be absolutely solid in the game. Also want you to take a look at that Riven went bot lane right now, so thus far, she has made almost all her decisions correct, right? And that's really good to see. And that's also what led into her being 8 and 0, so it was a combination of her making a lot of correct decisions. She also made a lot of flippy decisions and did not get punished, which is something that I again want to highlight too, because she did do a lot of inconsistent like decisions, or let's say risky plays, but they didn't seem to be risky because she did not get punished, but they were still risky. But now she is almost 10 cents per minute, eight and zero, and in the perfect prime position to carry this game. Let's continue. Now, I want you to memorize that after this turret, we get our gold for De Devson's almost pretty much, right? This wave is gonna give us 200 gold, so we're gonna sit on 900. So we could recall right here, and sell our D-Blade, and we have Death Stance, and we can fight the third dragon, and I am very confident that we would 1v9 this fight. If we just said right now, sell our D-Blade, get Death Stance, we are strong enough. Or if you don't want to sell your D-Blade, you ping to the golems right now, you ping your gold, you ping Death Stance, you ping that you need 100 gold, you would get the golems, you reset, you're in prime to fight this dragon, you're gonna have both summoners, you're gonna be strong enough, you're gonna be absolutely amazing. Another thing I want you guys to highlight right now, super important, look at this farm at this minute in the game. Everything you do right now has to be smooth in order for you to transition the game. Your allowed margin of error when you're this fed and you are this controlling in the game is pretty slow or it's pretty low because if you make mistakes, right, as the win condition, it's going to have very high consequences. However, it should also be easy for you to direct this game with how fed you are. I would have habitually looked to reset in terms of consistently consistency simply because it would guarantee that we win the next fight all right so instead we look to go into here which is something that i already dislike because we lose tempo doing this because we could be prime and ready with our items for the next dragon okay it ends up working out here and we find the briar and we get a shutdown so the result here is good but the same concept applies here now then i would hard push this side wave reset spend my gold and be ready for this dragon that is about to spawn or First take this dragon and then reset. So right now we killed the briar. So then take this dragon right now and reset. What our echo is doing is really bad, right? Plain simple, really bad. That is something that we do not control. So now I would just reset, spend my gold, and get back on the map. Simply because we have enough gold for our death stance. We need to contest this dragon and we don't have our ultimate and the echo is dead. But as you guys can already probably guess, remember he was also 170 CS at 17 minutes, right? We're gonna look for the fight right here. It ends up starting pretty good. We find the Soraka, and we kill the Soraka, which, which is good, right? But this is really good. Um, and we keep fighting. We find the Caitlyn as well. Pretty good. But I still don't like the intention here. And that is a thing that I want to really highlight. So even though this looks half decent, right? So here we kill the Soraka, and we kill the Caitlyn, and we are going to end up dying. So it looks, quote-unquote, decent. But the thing with this is that it's a super inconsistent play to make. In a different game, you might have just died without getting anything. In another different game, you may have literally killed everybody. But what I would have done 100% of the time is reset, get my death stance, and I know that my, let's say, odds would be way higher to get a good outcome than what I did right here, fighting without my ultimate and without my gold spent to the next item spike. 
And that is the habit that I need you to ingrain in the mid to late, because that is pure based around your tempo on the map. So now we've died, the dragon still hasn't been taken, Briar's back in the map with Ragdon, so they pretty much get free access to the dragon right now, and if they get the third dragon, they are in a prime position to have a really free re win condition. Also, we lose tempo on both wave right now, and Baron is already going to spawn. Now the thing is, our teammates are just going to be fighting here, Nico unfortunately gets cut again, but this is not in our control. Now, Echo does something amazing here, and they actually steals the dragon, so they do not get on soul point. That is important. But again, everything that happened here is super inconsistent, and we could have, regardless of the actions of our teammate, be put in a much better position. Now it's interesting to look at the game again. Uh, three of our teammates are dead, and Baron has spawned. So I would by default want to be mid lane right here. I would also check if Syndra has TP so she could maybe join as well, so we could defend the Nasher until our team is back on the map. So I'm going to be defending mid lane for one wave, simply because I'm going to be close to Nasher. Afterwards, I want to be bot lane and play for the tier 2 again, simply because that's the highest gold amount that I can farm on the map for free consistently. It looks like Riven goes mid, which is the correct play. Uh, nobody is close, so I don't really like looking for a skirmish here because I have no idea where anybody else is at. We find the Soraka, we find the KD, we should dip. We should 100% dip. Look, everybody's in the map. Syndra is both farming close to our tier 2. Smolder's in base, Nico's in base, Echo is dead. We use our flash and we die again. So... Although it looks very simple and very easy for us to critique right now, everybody watching, right? But I am certain that these are mistakes that you guys make as well. And now we have two deaths that were absolutely preventable. In fact, I would say both of them were blunders, completely useless. We give away another 1k shutdown to the Caitlyn. But another thing to highlight here is look at our farm. We were 170 CS at minute 17, right? Or let's say 17.30 or something. We're 176 CS three minutes later. That is sub 2 CS per minute in a position mid to late where we should be getting the most amount of farm because we can farm sideways on top of jungle camps. And we can maybe play two sideways at once in certain scenarios too. And why is this? Because we are not using our tempo correctly as well. And you see how one mistake can sometimes snowball to multiple mistakes happening in terms of tempo in mid to late. Similar to how one mistake in your first waves and laning phase can lead to so many mistakes happening afterwards as well like your lane is gonna get frozen because you died in the early game something like this right so now it's hard to stabilize and we've lost a shutdown we've lost our summoners so the game is definitely a little bit harder again i would buy sweeper as a habit and where would you want to go right now well same thing i would want to go bot our billy bonker syndra dying there is not in our control and tilty dogo going in like an absolute pig that he is legend sorry legend that he is is abs like it's not in our control as well you can ping your teammates more and control them more but uh it's tricky right now i understand Riven to go top here to deny the ranked and, be and because the side of even tier 2 is super far gone here so going top lane here is all right to to prevent the ranked or maybe i would go mid here to get the fight and maybe get the mid tier one as well the reason why we have to play responsive right now is because of the mistakes we have made earlier now checking tap it again it's super interesting so we see that like we are close to four items right uh, and, and again, I'd argue that we could have already had four items had we played for the tier 2 and or farmed more and be consistent, right? Uh, Caitlyn is going to be three items because she got a shutdown before she died. So she's going to be around three items. Briar is two and a half. Akali and Ranked are both one item. Echo is two items somehow. And Syndra's two items. So even though we are behind, like we are definitely still fighting this game. And you are the one that has to carry. So you have to make correct decisions. So go to top lane right here. And we finally catch a wave again. Okay, so we farm two waves. We're 190 is a minute 22 right now. And we're going to farm a jungle camp. Perfect. Okay, so here we end up finding the Briar, which I think is an absolutely amazing timer because Caitlyn and Soraka were pushing both 22 minutes in the game. I would want to be considering playing for Nash right here, even though our teammates are quite weak, simply because of the position of the map right now. We're going to have mid lane priority, enemy team showed bot, and Briar walks up in a jungle. So here, my idea is if I kill this Briar, I instantly want to go into Baron. Now, one mechanical error here, and this is a Riven's thing. Why are you Eing at the start of your combo when your opponent is already on top of you? And that gives you no opportunity to E away from his E right now instantly. If you had your E, this guy was dead instantly, and you can play for Baron. Great. So a tiny me mechanical misplay here as well. We kill the Briar. I would kite right here, and I would... I mean, actually, no. I would take this fight as well. Because Nico is here. And uh, this is pretty good. So we're fighting 3-1, we killed Caitlyn in the, in, the, in the meantime too, unfortunately we die, but we've killed 3 people, right? So there are 3 carries, or the 3 strongest members are dead, Caitlyn is dead, Briar is dead, which are the 2 strongest members, and Ranked is dead, which was occasionally strong. Akali had used ult, the other remaining member is Soraka. Why are you not spam pinging your team right now to do the Baron? You spam ping your team to do Baron right now, 
boom, you all reset. You're going to be alive again. And the game is absolutely in an amazing position. You're going to be able to siege. Your team sieges mid. You siege bot. You get the tier 2. Game is amazing. Instead, you're just spectating your team. You're not controlling them either. Because this is the freest Baron I've seen ever, right? And it's so important to be aware of Baron Macro. Because if you don't play Baron right now and instead are looking to kill these guys, what, do, what does it do? What is the merit, right? It's just flippy. So coming back from lane again, what should we do? Well, I would really want to start playing bot and play for the tier 2. Or get picks to play for Baron. But look, we just do the exact same thing. We just go into that jungle and hope again for the good skirmish to come out. And since minute 17, I felt like there has just been us responding instead of us controlling the game. And looking for a random place. And this is what makes so many players inconsistent in the mid to late. Once you start losing grasp of that tempo and that priority, the game come, gets into a position where you don't really control the game. You're more so responding. Or you're looking for skirmishes. Sometimes the skirmish is going to go amazing. You win the game. Sometimes the skirmish is going to go absolute dog shit. You lose the game. And you see, this is where the inconsistency lies. There's no structure anymore. So here we kill the Briar. Beautiful. All right. I've been considering setting up for our next dragon. We are looking for the ranked in the year two. Okay, perfect. Soraka walks into you. So we kill the Soraka instead. Our teammates are dying again. That is out of your control, by the way. Your Smolder and Cinder dying absolutely sucks because this will be a Baron angle again. That is your teammates. And I, and I, and I, I of course, agree with that, right? I'm not saying your teammates are, are playing good here, but we definitely had the opportunity to, to have been in a better position to carry this game. All right, so now we push this out. Next dragon is spawning. Um, I think you should have already been resetting here because this dragon is spawning in like 15 seconds. You can just... The wave is pushing away from the side, but absolutely doesn't matter. So we should reset right now and move with our team towards the dragon in 26 seconds because you are still by far the strongest member in this game and you can win a 5v5. Also, what I start doing right here, and which is super important habitually to do for you guys as well, is I'm already going to check the items and kind of visualize how I want to, or anticipate how I'm playing at this team fight. So, some things I look at is, okay, my Syndra does not have flash, but she has a Zonya, so I don't really have to peel for her, right? Smolder has no flash, so that's a tricky thing. But Nico does have flash, and that's super important, because she has flash Zonyas and her ultimate. Okay, that's a really free 2 to team fight. Okay, what are some things I should be careful in enemy team? Are I Briar's three full items now? Caitlyn's three full items, so I know who I should be anticipating damage from, right? And on top of that, I know who can self peel and who have flash and who don't. So I kind of know how I want to play out the team fight. And uh, another thing is, look, we were 170 CS at minute 17. We are 23 CS extra in what? Eight minutes? Eight minutes of gameplay, or six or s seven minutes. But you see here, our mid to late, we, we just stop farming, and this is the case for so many players, and that is because we're just permanently fighting. Without, without the clue, right? Without the clue, honestly. All right, I would say thus far, only one that has, has been justifiable as one. That's the death we had right here because it would have led to Nasher had we picked our team to do so. Instead, we stayed on the map, which I disagree with, lose tempo. Ranked in shows top, so that's good. So we can move first. But again, look at our team. Small the Sinja are in base. Nico, Echo are not here. So what should we do? Link up with our team, right? Link up with our Nico. That's our main engage. Instead, we're going full Tarzan. Montage mode, we're not even close to 16, we find the Briar, okay, that's good though, we E into her E, sucks, then we don't get the kill, we flash her to the Caitlyn, good target, okay, you get the kill, get out, jump out right now, we're good, we, you got your assassination, but look, you just look into Montage, your team's not even close, nobody can hit, and now you end up dying, why? There was no reason, there was absolutely no reason to do this, and that's again the thing, sometimes your fights are gonna go well, sometimes they're gonna go shit, your team ends up swooping the team fight, and I would still say that this is because of your effort. But I still don't like that we died and the way we executed this fight in the general sense, simply because I feel like you're not looking at the minimap before heading into the team fight. And again, your team should be doing Baron. Why did we not do Baron again? I would ping Baron. I mean, could we do Baron? Probably not, actually. No, never mind. It's fine that we did just, just did the dragon and we stabilize. Our team bond the skirmish, and everybody's on the map again. You're in base, smaller this base. Your team are, it's are doing the exact same thing you're doing before, and it's just fighting for fun and for the sake of it. I don't know what Billy Bonkers is doing or Binky Bonkers and Tilty Dogo are doing here. They are just running it down. Absolutely no reason. So this sucks to see. And again, this is not in your control, but you've had the tendency to show this as well, right? So we go here. We find the Briar. Perfect. Uh, okay, she's out. Everybody on your team is dead. And what are we doing? So Billy Bonkers, Tilty Dogo just did that. We're doing the exact same thing. The thing it is, is that, I mean, it's very clear what's going wrong, right? It's super, super clear what's going wrong. On top of that, why is the enemy team not doing Baron here? Right? Sure, it's just driven, but surely they could do Baron with Smolder being both and five of them being alive. Multiple things here. And again, this is Platinum, Emerald, MR-ish. People are really bad at playing around 
Baron Macro. People have no idea about tempo in mid to late, right? And that is such a clear concept that you see here continuously. And now, at this point in the game, I can't really argue. I, I, can, I couldn't really tell you who is stronger. It's just a matter of execution right now, and whoever gets picked gets picked and like wins the game. So at this point in the game, we don't control it anymore because we're not really ahead of the gold curve anymore or EXP curve. And it's just anybody's game right now, especially after this mistake. Ranked is level 16, we're level 16. Sure, we might still be a little bit of items ahead, but like we're four and a half items. Briar is probably gonna have her fourth item. Caitlyn is probably gonna have her fourth item. So we don't really control the game anymore. At this point, it's just whoever plays the team fights better wins the game. Although, had we managed the game so much better before, we would have just won this game with, with ease, right? Had we just made better decisions and not got caught so many times. Yeah, now, now the game has just turned into a little bit of a fiesta, honestly. And, um, yeah, Syndra gets caught, people are gonna get caught, and, uh, eventually, actually, because of your death, that's something I, I for forgot to escape over, because of your death, they do end up starting the Baron here, finally, they get it. Yeah, it just turned into a mess, and eventually we get a teamfight right here, I believe we lose it, right? And, uh, around the dragon, like, it's just going to be a back and forth, back and forth, and we lose one teamfight, and, uh, they end up winning the game which is very sad. But what do we take away from here? It is that tempo and macro and habits are super important. Especially once you control the game yourself, right? It's super easy this game to look back and kind of blame your teammates for us losing the game. But, and at the end of the game, our score is 21 and seven. At the end of the day, it would be super easy to look back at this game. You were eight and zero after losing, losing, uh, leaving your lane and point everywhere around you and see, well, this is the guy that died here, and this is why I lost the game. And oh, they didn't do this, and that's why I lost the game. Oh, and this and this happened, that's why I lost the game, right? Our goal should be to be very self-aware and look at improving our own mistakes, because as you guys can clearly see in this game, there were still countless of mistakes that he made before he was 8 and 0, even. So many mistakes and habits that he could have done better, right? Even though he was 8 and 0 with almost 10 CS per minute. But after that, there were like an immense amount of mistakes that he made, right? And so if we just focus on ourselves and ingrain that and look to fix those habits, you will be climbing consistently, I can guarantee you. I hope you guys were able to take away some things of, of course, the importance of fundamentals in the laning phase, but also your structure, your tempo and your macro in the mid to late, because that ultimately is your second part to winning games consistently. That will be it for uh, this episode of Fundamentals Academy. I hope you guys absolutely enjoyed it, learned something new and are able to apply this to your own gameplay. I wish you all an absolutely amazing remainder of your day. Thank you for coming by. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Yeah, yeah.